Hello and welcome to this week's What Were They Thinking? Begin with, there's some bizarre news about the AstraZeneca vaccine. We have a number of different numbers coming out of their clinical trial. Some are more expected than others. One that's not is the differing effectiveness based on exactly what sort of vaccination regime is being used. Two numbers have been touted. One is a 70% effectiveness. The second is the more widely heard 90% effectiveness. These two different figures are based on two different ways the vaccines are administered. The higher number relies on a small vaccine dose and then a full vaccine dose. That is by itself counterintuitive. Why does starting with a small amount and building up to a larger amount initiate a better immune response than simply giving the full dose? It's currently being theorized that perhaps this approach is better at rallying the immune system and keeping it engaged for longer, which leads to a better sense of immunity. There are other thoughts as well, but that doesn't really affect the end result. At the moment, AstraZeneca is still looking at their clinical trials and how they can modify them to better indicate what is the best way to administer the vaccine. At the moment, they know that they need to use multiple doses. It's just a question of how they administer them, when, and in what concentration. Next, we go to New York, where we need to look at the significant lockdowns that are happening there. New York has engaged some of the more rigorous restrictions on what people can and cannot do. Obviously, there has been some inevitable pushback. People did not want this. They were not happy about it. But it was a public health measure taken in an effort to minimise the spread. As has been the case with other diseases, such as measles, the Hasidic Jewish people in New York have been a source of trouble when it comes to it. In this case, they organised a very large-scale wedding involving thousands of people who were packed into a very small space and were not wearing masks. The number of ways in which this breached the health regulations that have been implemented to curb the COVID-19 spread cannot be counted easily. It can only be assumed that the people involved were only too well aware of what they were doing and how wrong it was. They made sure to ensure nothing in any way, shape or form could be kept as a record. There were no posters, no notices, no emails. Everything was done through direct contact with other people. The problem with this event and others is that it can give rise to very quick, uncontrolled spread of the virus. Theoretically, one person in there could easily infect hundreds if not thousands of others. These themselves would then go on to spread the disease as well, and it creates one small nucleus leading to a series of cascading infections that blow out of all proportion to the initial event. There is of course yet another irony to this. The recent president of the synagogue, who was 70, died last month of the COVID-19 and yet the synagogue itself feels as a community that it needed to run this wedding. This of course has not been the only example of people engaging in reckless behaviour. In Fort Lauderdale, a bar was packed with thousands of young, college-aged students, among others. These people are also not engaging in social distancing, wearing face coverings, or anything else. There were hundreds of people here, compared to the thousands, but it's indicative of a far wider lack of concern. What happened is simple. The bar reopened as the weather began to improve and restrictions eased. This meant the business could begin earning an income again. All of this is perfectly reasonable and understandable. The problem is the patrons who were there and making the business run weren't engaging in proper behaviour for the situation. 
consider that America continues to increase its daily rate of diagnoses for the CCP virus, the number of hospitalizations go up, and the number of dead and dying increase as a result of both of these things. For example, in Broward County itself, the number of cases are up by 49% compared to last week's cases. They were reporting more than 8,400 cases a day over last weekend. Going now from the nightmare that is COVID-19 and the lack of people's understanding and appreciation for just how serious it is, we now go to another even more unpleasant if not nightmarish phenomena. A young 20-year-old man from India was admitted to the emergency room of a hospital due to abdominal pain, diarrhea, and vomiting. You might think initially food poisoning, but no. When he was tested with blood tests, it showed an elevated white blood cell count and also elevated levels of hemoglobin. This normally would mean something like an infection or something as serious as cancer. To get an idea as to just which end of the spectrum the problem lay, they conducted an ultrasound of his inferior vena cava. It's a large vein that feeds the liver from everything in the bottom of the body. This would give them some idea as to how the liver was to start with. In the process of setting up for that and getting the ultrasound device all running, they noticed something moving around in his stomach. Nominally, nothing in your stomach should be moving. You've either crushed it while chewing, or it's been melted by the stomach's acid. Either way, it should have been turned into chyme, a sludge within your stomach that would find its way into your small intestine. It should not squirm. Well, it turns out that uh, this was indeed squirming. The structure they noticed that was moving turned out to be a worm, specifically a roundworm a very large roundworm. This was identified by taking a stool sample and seeing what it contained. In this case, it was the eggs from said roundworm. Now, they're not an uncommon parasite, in fact, they're very common. It's thought that between 800 and 1.2 billion people across the globe have them. They can grow quite long, up to about 30 centimetres. For those of you who insist upon using the backwards imperial system, it's about a foot. In most countries that are developed and have a good medical system, they are rare. You'll find that they generally get picked up in areas that have a lack of sanitation and a lack of medical services. This coupled with hygiene issues means they often get picked up in areas like India. Fortunately, it to some extent, a roundworm can be treated with antiparasitic drugs, and after being given this, the man was released from hospital. After a follow up, he was identified that he had passed the worm in his stool and was no longer infected with the parasite. Now, like other diseases we mentioned in the past, it's better to avoid it than it is to treat it. The expression is something to the effect of an ounce of prevention versus a pound of treatment. Yeah, that applies in this case. We mentioned about a week ago that the platypus from Australia fluoresces under ultraviolet light. Well, it turns out that Australia is full of bizarre animals that fluoresce. The reason the platypus was discovered in the first place was curiosity about some of the mammals and marsupials across the world that have been reacting in the same way. Well, Australia also happens to have quite a few mammals marsupials, and creatures within the platypus family, which is known as the monotremes. Various staff within national and state-based institutions thought to have a look at their own collections. This included one of them based out of West Australia. They took a look at their collection, and this included the wombat. Lo and behold, the wombat glows, along with about a third of their collection. That means Australia has a bizarrely high representation of animals that glow under a black light. In another instance of animals, or at least in this case insects, being weird, 
there are ants that are developing a sort of armor. Leafcutter ants are one of the more common varieties of ants in Africa. They tend to create a large aggregation in their nest. These are divided into different sects. Some are soldiers, some are there to be gardeners, and so on. But you need to be aware of the fact that, given the way they live, their life is less than peaceful a lot of the time. The worker ants are therefore often subject to violence, invasion from other nests, attack by predators, and so on. But also, where they live is not exactly the most comfortable of places. This is one reason why they have developed their armour, or at least in theory. What is interesting about it is that it takes their normal skeleton, which is on the outside of their body, much like crabs and lobsters, and begins to mineralize it. This creates a biomineral armor. It builds onto and becomes part of their exoskeleton. The reason we mention not only the fact they live in a violent environment, but also an unpleasant environment, is that the armor they have not only protects them from violence from other species and other ants, but also has a role in protecting them from infection. Primarily, the infection or pathogen being investigated in this case was a fungus, and they found that with the armor, leafcutter ants had better protection from the fungus than those that did not have it. In some plant-based news, we have both good news and bad news. A number of bonsai trees have been recovered, more than $30,000 worth, these were found by police when they were searching a property. This means that they're considered the proceeds of crime or, and or stolen property. The problem with this is that the 45 stolen trees will be inevitably put into storage and kept there, where the police, in all likelihood, will fail to look after them, inevitably leading to the death of these trees, the $30,000 worth of trees. That is the loss of 45 otherwise good bonsai. And while the owner will at least get his pots back and possibly have some nice sticks sticking out of them, that will be about it. Next we want to talk about uh, America and the bizarre prank played in Utah. Someone has gone to a lot of effort to take a large metal block, triangular block, out into the middle of a Utah desert and embedded in the ground. You may or may not have seen the nearly metre tall metal block in various online posts and stories. It is, according to most, an homage to 2001 A Space Odyssey. The metal block is fundamentally a replication of the monolith that fell to earth and gave rise to the movie. If that is the case, then whoever created this was not aware of the actual information and dimensions, as the original had a ratio of 1, 4, and 9. The monolith recreated in this case has an equal width and depth. The agencies responsible for this location are attempting to keep it quiet. They're doing this for a number of reasons, the first and simplest of which is that it is in an isolated location and they think that if they let anyone try and find their way out there, they'd have a significant increase in number of people who were stuck, and therefore needed to be rescued. The second, which is slightly more practical, the art exhibition, let's call it, or installation, was not approved. It's someone having fun and pulling a prank. Of course, that means that they're not going to be able to leave it there. It's going to be removed, inevitably. Our final piece of news for this week also has to do with the astrological. The difference between this and the other stories is, well, you can almost think that it was related to an Incan doomsday prophecy, but it's not, thankfully. It's likely we're going to see a number of giant sunspots clustering together over Thanksgiving. This means that we're going to see at least moderate change in weather on Earth. The more important issue is that with these sunspots come solar flares. 
solar flares are the bigger issue as they can significantly interrupt anything based in space that's not being protected. Think of things like satellites for communication or GPS. If they are not properly set up to deal with this oncoming effect before it arrives, they could well be destroyed or damaged. The prediction lined up perfectly and the researchers involved with this were able to predict not only where but when they would occur. And as a result, preparations were made and things went ahead without an issue. And that's all the news we have for you this week. Thank you for watching. If you found it interesting, consider liking, sharing and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions or suggestions you might have below.